Hello guys, we are here to show off all of our tokens that are kind of available for a limited time over the holidays. They're going to be treated a little bit differently, so we will explain that as we go. But we realized that, uh, you know, we've had pictures of these, we have them on the website, but we hadn't had the chance to actually sit down and do a video just kind of showing them off and actually giving an understanding of what these tokens are and what they represent. Uh, so that's what we're going to do really quickly here today on the stream, and then we'll uh, cut it and go to God tier. So kicking it off, Zach, I would like to start with, there are essentially four non-holiday offerings. So it Clarify if I'm wrong or at, this is a question I've heard a lot. It'd be a shame if you were. I mean, you know, I could be <laughs> live. Or could be wrong. The non-holiday tokens here are not necessarily limited time. Uh, not necessarily. They That's will correct. stick around for a certain amount of time. That's a pretty good categorization to kind of uh, put down the middle. So the, the gold and silver variations of products that are pre-existing, those are our official holiday tokens. They're only available for a limited time, usually until late December, early January, depending on kind of volume and demand. And so once that kind of tapers off, we discontinue those. And then we usually introduce some variation of holiday tokens every year, although we didn't do it, I think, last year for the first time yep. because we were out of our minds busy with that key forge. Uh, totally. That's uh, our concept. For If you haven't been around that long, I think we started, our first year doing that was like 2014, 2015. Uh, but it's we take old tokens and we do cool variations on them that wouldn't necessarily make sense to keep in production or do at production. So here we have the like the sparkling. I don't know how you wrote about it, but the gold and the silver. Uh, there's some. <laughs> That's a good word. I use that. Shimmering. Shimmering. Instead of black, it's obsidian. It's obsidian. obsidian. Yeah, it's obsidian. It's obsidian. Uh, anyways, me so uh, there are things we regularly or sometimes have available that are just kind of a different theme, and then the other tokens, of course, are just brand new. Yeah, so let's start with them. So these are essentially just kind of special editions, um, starting with the Arkham Doom tokens, and we can start with the uh, one that's inspired by the Circle Undone cycle. So we're calling it the Undone Doom token. Uh, these are in packs of 10, and we've been doing these Doom tokens to kind of celebrate the various cycles as they come out. And this is us essentially getting caught up to all the way up to Dream Eaters. And then we'll see what uh, comes up next. So these guys are all about Circle Undone. Jonathan did a lot of great research on these, um, looking at all the, the witch stuff that we could find and kind of seeing how it relates to the game as a whole. Uh, and this is just a very thematic way to track Doom during this set of scenarios and during this cycle rather than using the basic Doom or just kind of the more vanilla Doom that would come in the core box. So it kind of puts you in the zone of that cycle and makes you feel a very certain kind of way, which is, you know, when we're looking at how to enhance a, a game playing experience, as anybody who has our tokens probably recognizes at this point, we are looking to basically draw you as far into the world as possible, kind of lose yourself in whatever's going on on the table. Um, so this is an effort to continue to do that. And Arkham is a great community. We love all of the Arkham players, many of which have stuck around. We have Arkham subscribers that have been here for how many years? When did that game start? 2016. Since 2016. So now Just over the whole three run. years. Yeah, which Absolutely is pretty crazy. It. And uh, as notably, so we did, I don't even think, I'm trying to remember the timeline on this, but it was like we did the Mythos tokens. Uh, it wasn't immediate. Like, yeah. It wasn't like a, this, took a this happened. I think there, it was yeah. the year after it came out. And then it wasn't even until a year after that that we did the boards to go along with it. But the number of people that have bought the tokens and the boards, and we've done a, two different boards now, uh, people asking for the other ones. Uh, and then all the Doom tokens is also a lot. So it's, it's the, the support there has been incredible. Then we also have the uh, Dream Eater inspired uh, Doom tokens. So these are bringing a, it's one of my favorite colors that we've never used before. Um, and it's kind of a sparkly pink purple kind of thing. And when we saw this, we just thought it perfectly fit the theme of that cycle. Um, and it's kind of this dreamy space. We've got the kind of melting stars theme that's going on. But like melting hanging stars off yeah. the moon is like super, that's really cool. It certainly felt like it represented what that cycle was trying to kind of bring to the fore and make you feel. Um, so we put those in the, the same color, also in packs of 10. And both of these uh, Doom tokens are going to be available for essentially a limited time. We have all of our previous themed Doom tokens on what we call the reprint waitlist. So basically, we do a run of these tokens once the waitlist builds to a certain size. Um, so these will go to that status soon as well. So they're kind of widely available up front, and then they will be uh, put on the reprint waitlist, and they'll be like, you know, usually two-ish printings a year 
of these kinds of products, depending on where the demand is ba yeah. based on that wait list. And if you're on that wait list, you get an email as soon as they're in stock, and then once they're gone, they're gone again, and the wait list starts building again. So that kind of keeps repeating itself. And it keeps rolling. Also on the special edition train, we have the Ward slash Enrage tokens, uh, compatible with Keyforge. These have been kind of long awaited in Worlds Collide because those two mechanics were introduced and tokens for them were needed. Um, took a, a little bit more time on these than expected because we went through a couple of redesign iterations that were just kind of necessary. Sometimes that happens during the process. You don't nail it the very first moment, and so you just kind of have to say, well, are we <laughs> going to push it out or are we just going to take the time to do it right? Uh, and we took the time to do it right, or at least what we feel is uh, the right way to do totally. it. Totally. Well, I, I was using these this weekend, and uh, beyond what I was saying, so what they, people were saying to me when they were using them, I uh, was really appreciating the fact that they're double-sided. So yeah. this is important to note, which is a lot of people thought they were separate tokens, uh, but the ward and the enrage are on the same token, just one side is ward and one's the enrage. That's right. And because, I mean, we're all, I'm, most of us are pretty much minimalists, I would say, just in our general uh, lifestyle, in, the, in as least pretentious way as I can say that is possible, I, which is very difficult. I think maybe more than minimalism, it's like a focus thing. Yeah. Which is like when we get into stuff, we go like. Well, this is like, I don't want to have 60 different tokens that are all tracking a different thing. Sure. Like if I can bring a pile of 30 tokens and have all of my stuff covered rather than 60, I will choose that option every, every time. time. Yeah. Um, so that's why the double-sided with the different uh, icons makes sense. And some decks will have no enrage and all ward. Some will have all ward, no enrage. So you can basically mix and match as you like. So these will be available for a few more weeks, and then we will nest them into the uh, power and armor set to make kind of a macro supplementary set uh, so that moving forward, if you don't already have uh, any of these tokens, you can basically pick up the whole thing at once in that supplementary set. But that does mean that at least as of right now, if you have the all the other, like the power and armor tokens, and you want these Warden and Rage, they're only going to be available separately for a limited time, uh, very limited time, like a couple of weeks from now. So uh, make sure to jump on that now, because once they have been nested into that bigger set, we do not have them available as singles again. So just keep that in mind. Very important to note. Yeah, so that's the uh, Keyforge compatible uh, special edition. And then we're not sure how long these are going to be around. It'll depend on demand, of course. I, I think we <laughs> might want to keep these stocked for a little, a little while, maybe permanently. Um, these are our Green Goblin inspired uh, threat tokens, threat trackers for uh, compatible with, I should say, Marvel Champions Living Card Game. And this is just a super thematic way uh, to track all of the threat happening on the various schemes and the various plots that the villain, and in this case, kind of Green Goblin, Norman Osborn, is doing during a game. So they work perfectly for that function. And they essentially kind of show off two sides of that uh, persona, I Which would he, say. He has two sides. Yeah. That's the idea. There's kind of the like glider, pumpkin bomb, wild side. And then there's the lab uh, making a serum scientist side that ultimately kind of, you know, leads to uh, the goblin stuff. <laughs> uh, so this is basically just like d two really incredible tokens, just ones and twos. You can slot them into your current villain token set. You can use them for uh, the goblin specific stuff, or if you have like the goblin modular sets that you're bringing into your main scheme, you can throw them on whenever it makes sense on those side schemes that come out. And it's really just, you know, again, a more thematic way to kind of jump into this game. And if, if these do well, I, I mean, I would be very interested in continuing to make these kinds of products that, you know, kind of make you feel like you're having a really special experience whenever you change out the villains. Um, because like that just really appeals to us as players, and so I think it'd be a fun thing to do. Well, I think the ability on the threat to design thematically like this yeah. and tell a story like a, is is super cool. So the response so far has been really great, and if that keeps happening, I assume we'll keep seeing that. For we know Wrecking Crew's coming, uh, yeah. which presents its own unique. Uh, yeah, we're issues. actually working on that right now, and and I think we'll we'll solve that one pretty tidily. And then that presented like a problem, so I felt like we <laughs> needed to solve that problem. If there's another villain, you know, and it's just like, well, we could do tokens, but it's not needed to kind of satisfy the demands of the board. That's when we'll have to make the choice of like, well, let's look at Green Goblin and how did things go there, and then is it worth committing the time and the resources to doing it? You know, business. Um, let's go now to all of the holiday tokens. So starting out with, let's start out with. Um, I'll go. I'll start here. So I love these tokens. Amber tokens compatible yeah. with Keyforge. 
Basically, our amber tokens pre-existing are a nice orange acrylic with that white paint fill. Have a nice like glow look to them. Yeah, yeah, and they fit in our keys in the Archon token set, and they also are, every set is unique. So we basically saw the basic outline of, oh, a unique deck game, that sounds amazing. What can we do to kind of bring in some of that excitement to the offerings that we have? And Jonathan, who's sitting over there, developed a incredible kind of randomizing system uh, for the designs on these uh, amber tokens. So all of these are still all unique. So none of the gold silver sets will be the same as any of the orange sets previously or the same as any in the current uh, gold and silver scheme. So anytime you buy an amber set, it's going to be completely unique. This is no exception. And it's got a beautiful gold paint fill on one side and a beautiful silver paint fill on the other. We actually kind of looked at using these in, in pretty cool ways because having an on-off amber, if you want it, can be useful. Yeah, um, so like gold could be mine, and then if you capture it or something, maybe it's silver. Yeah, maybe you flip it over to signify that this is one that I need to give back at the end of the game to my opponent, those kinds of things. So it can be very handy there, and I know that's something that you've uh, explored a little bit. Yeah. So hopefully it's it works out for you. Those are gold and silver basically just these amber tokens, and they look absolutely brilliant. I was going to say, it's, it's hard to catch on photo, and you, it was captured somewhat on the photos that we posted, but uh, the gold and silver do literally sparkle, so there is a an actual sparkle going on, and once you see all these, like I'm looking at these clue tokens over here in a stack, uh, and there's just a presence to them yeah. that is really nice. They look nice. Yeah. I mean, these are, these are not, these colors are not new in the world of nice looking things. Black on gold, huh? No one's ever thought of that, have they? <laughs> it's a decent scheme. Uh, let's go uh, next in line to uh, Netrunner compatible uh, click trackers. A little this throwback is, here. This is just a love of this game. We just can't stay away from it. And we saw these design files sitting there, and we were kind of developing the plan for uh, what tokens we wanted to do. And I know that Nisei project's been kicking, and I know there's like new set coming out. I've seen some spoilers from that kind of stuff. Well, and and that's like, what you know, Nisei moving let's on. Let's hit it. We have the, on the limited reprint waitlist uh, system, we also have the data tokens that we did way back in the day, back in 2013, I think, for Netrunner the first time. Uh, but a lot of the reasons that we, originally that was just gone. And yeah. then we brought it back because so many people were actually asking us about these tokens and asking, hey, are you ever going to make these available again? Uh, I think in large part due to the work that Nisei is doing. Yeah. So we brought those tokens back, but one thing we didn't bring back, which was super popular uh, in 2013 and 2014 and back when Netrunner was doing his thing, is the click trackers. Yeah. Uh, so this was kind of a unique time for us to not only use the, the theme, the black and gold and the black and silver, but also uh, to offer it in a very limited capacity, because again, it doesn't necessarily make sense for us to be in full production on these all the time. Uh, but I think that was a very, uh, I w a lot of people have been excited to see these, and I'm happy to see that was the reception. Yeah, absolutely. So these are, you know, super limited. It's a couple more weeks probably on these guys. So if you're a Netrunner uh, player or if you know one, this would be a pretty good gift, honestly, um, any, for any Netrunner player, especially one who's still playing. And hopefully uh, a lot of us kind of come back into that over time. I feel like... I feel like if the game continues on a pace and kind of stabilizes and is shown to be like a, a steady thing that's happening, it's like, well, let's go. Yep. What's to stop us? Uh, next up, we have the Power Rangers. Here's the grid compatible action tokens or action trackers. This circular, circular grid in the gold. It's funny because really these kind of cool. stem from the early click trackers that we uh, had designed and kind of the idea of flipping uh, to mark that you have completed an action. Um, so these are, again, just in gold and silver, original designs, as in the Morphin token set. Um, they look absolutely gorgeous and are essentially just the, the fanciest and nicest <laughs> way. You roll into these, you roll into a game of uh, Heroes of the Grid with some gold and silver action tokens. This will cover all four players, so it's a great little upgrade, and it really is just kind of a, this is a nice little holiday perk. They really pop. If you pop. play Power Rangers, uh, Heroes of the Grid, it's just a good little upgrade to what you might already have, and uh, a great little just signifier of, I'm taking this game seriously, and I like care about it a lot. <laughs> these yeah, kinds of they things. really do. Yeah. Like, again, there's something about this gold, and the, especially if you look at the designs that have like, this almost hatching around the, the edge of the circles. Yeah. Um, it really makes them sparkle and stand out, so like, uh, you could easily see this like, across the table, I think it's going to be a nice uh, way to track the actions. That's right. Course. You want to you want to see those actions right yeah. on the table. Uh, next up, let's go to our Arkham Horror compatible uh, clue limited edition. These holiday clue tokens. My goodness, do I love these! Um, they look it, particularly. I, I hadn't seen them in a stack like this. Yeah. Until just now. 
and all piled up like that, there's a, there's just that sparkle that's happening. I don't, it's hard to even like really explain. The front, the front side is the clue side. The back side is a, a supply side. It, I have loved this design forever. If you really dive into there, there's a lot of different things being represented, not least of which is like bullets. You can actually make out uh, bullets because they often mark ammo. Mm -hmm. There's also like little flashlight type charges. Um, we've got the arcane symbol in the middle that's kind of acting as a spell charge. So the idea is that they can track any number of things that you're going to be putting these supply or use tokens on. And the uh, clue being in gold actually really fits the Arkham aesthetic a lot better than I was expecting. You know, <laughs> we went into this and being like, okay, all of these are going to be the same color scheme. But Arkham as a game really lends itself to this nice dark um, black, like gold and silver aesthetic. It kind of has that Victorian feel a little sure. bit. It has that kind of, um, I don't know, it's, it's not expressly... Arkham, but it there's something about it that just feels like it fits in that universe. Sure. Well, I mean, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but is the initial Dunwich setting? It, it's in the 20s, right? I think so. Like the yeah. Roaring 20s as yeah. well. So you have yeah, that like yeah. Gatsby. There's like hats and guns and stuff. So I'm thinking like Gatsby and yeah. like the uh, there's a lot of metal elements for some reason. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but particularly Gatsby. This feels Gatsby. I'll All say right. that. Well, I'll take that. That's how we should have pit pitched these. It's good the book. Gatsby tokens. <laughs> Yeah, everybody, everybody, <laughs> everybody loves Gatsby. The board. There also love Hop onto the Gatsby token. And then finally, for our friend Justin A, here is a <laughs> black and gold uh, saga board f compatible with Star Wars Destiny. Uh, check your local listings. This is essentially just a holder for the card, all the dice, all of your tokens, your saga tokens for health and uh, shields. And so, honestly, you just if you just want to roll in and and have this, this is uh, for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I have, we have the standard, it's like black acrylic with the white paint. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we did some promotional ones for the Master Series last year that were blue with the white, which I have. And they have a little more like stained glass design, which I like. But then this is probably the only color scheme that could have bought me, or got me, not bought me, could have, could <laughs> have pushed, buy me. I did, it could have pushed me into <laughs> buying more of these boards. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm a huge fan of the black and gold theme, and so if you play Destiny and you either have boards and you are, need something fresh on the table or have never picked up the boards, this is a great great chance to do it. Again, we have this like uh, grading almost, the hatching yeah. on these uh, circles in the middle, and they just really pop. It happens on the clue tokens as well. Yeah, that's what I'm talking It's just like, for some reason, it makes it really, you can see the sparkles particularly. Uh, so I'm a huge fan of these, and I have been using them, and they look great, great. on the table. Well, if we can get you to spend money, that's at least one sale you did. that's guaranteed. Order placed. So this is all the stuff that we've got going on kind of during this holiday period. There's been a lot of announcements and things. Just wanted to get it all collected. Um, again, the Doom tokens, the theme Doom tokens, will be around for a little while, and then they'll go to a reprint-only status. So pick those up now if you need them. The Warden and Rage will be around as a single pack for a little while as well, and then they will get nested into a bigger supplementary pack with the Power and Armor tokens. So if you need these as a separate purchase, now is the time to do that, because that could happen pretty soon. We've also got the Goblin-inspired Threat tokens, and these will be around uh, probably the longest of all. I think we'll continue to sell through these for a while and then kind of see where demand ultimately ends up and then either keep them in stock or throw them on the reprint wait list as well. So if you want to be guaranteed to get them, obviously those are all very good time. It's a very good time right now to do that. Uh, then we have our expressly holiday tokens, the gold and silver variations of tokens that we've already designed. And those will strictly be around until like end of December, early January, and then they will start to trail off. So um, if you would like them, I, you know, obviously we would love it if you would just throw all of your money at us right now. <laughs> Uh, but for real, they will, you know, kind of disappear more or less without any kind of notice or announcement. Um, so be aware of that. And if you want to commit or get some Christmas money and this is how you want to invest, then uh, do it quicker rather than slower. Which is part of why they'll stick around until probably early January because people yeah. do get Christmas money. Because I'm going to get my Arkham clues. Yeah. And on top of that, to uh, one thing I do want to mention is that we ran out of the Amber Tokens. Um, those are currently building a wait list, so if you want to be notified when those come in, you can do that. The second but, printing's already out, isn't it? Yeah. As, as those go in and out of stock, I uh, highly recommend hopping on the wait list if you want to get them, and then you'll be notified as soon as they come in. And usually with these, we're, we try to put them in stock in such a way that they all become in stock 
at the same time yeah. or around the same time. It's a, that the way, teeter totter of death. That if we're you're wanting to, to order multiple of the things, you have a chance to do that all at once and not have to pay extra in shipping. Uh, but depending on demand and the, the pace of orders and stuff, it's it's really hard for us to stay exactly on top of that. But the wait list is the way to go to make sure you're, you know what's up. That's it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I saw uh, some kind of comment about about boards for Arkham. Yep. That is something we're probably working on uh, <laughs> shortly. So uh, thanks for it's your on the, interest It's on the that. short list. We can't wait. Thanks for watching. And we're going to come right back with some God tier if you're watching us stream this live. And we will see you then. Until next time, keep playing.